Hello, good day, ladies and gentlemen from all over the world. It's your boy, Wale, coming to you live. On this program, I have seen God in Nigeria. So the program is all about I have seen God in Nigeria. I have seen Jesus Christ in Nigeria. So what is it about that we claim that we've seen Jesus Christ in Nigeria? Jesus Christ himself told us that he is the poor people. Jesus Christ characterized himself as the poor, the vulnerable, the weak, the marginalized. Where did he characterize himself like that? So we are going to see it again. Or Matthew chapter 25 from verse 32. He himself is the one who said that he is that poor man whom you are abandoning. So, we started with that last week that we have seen Jesus Christ. A woman from China is the one who actually claimed that she has seen Jesus Christ in Nigeria. A lot of Jesus Christ. Plenty people to help. Plenty people to help. And you know, China does not worship Jesus Christ. Their God is Hindus, Confucius. Uh, more those kind of things. So when the China claimed that he have seen Jesus Christ in Nigeria, it, I was so fascinated to go and see the kind of Jesus Christ I saw. But I realized that his Jesus Christ is the most accurate because also almost everybody poor, almost everybody poor. Only five percent of Nigeria are rich. Only five percent of Nigeria are rich. Almost everyone is poor. Everybody need help. Everybody need help. Apart from maybe less than 20 pastors or less than 50 pastors and maybe the top politician and maybe 0.8% of businessmen or let's say 1% businessmen. So all of them put together are not yet still up to 5%. So that means many Nigerians are poor, including bankers need help. Including bankers need food to eat. Their salary did not. Including medical. In fact, I don't even know which. Um, how do they call it? Classes of um, work does not require help in Nigeria, and that is why a lot of people now in Nigeria are Jesus Christ. Now, how did we know that people would need help at Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ said, "When the Son of Man shall come." In his glory, he will sit on the throne and judge, and he will cast the evil one to the left into everlasting fire, and the good one to the right into life and tana. And he will say, The reason why I cast you into the air is because the reason why I cast you into that hellfire is because I was hungry and you did not give me food, I was poor. And you did not help me. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. I was in I was sick and you did not visit me. I was in prison. The most important among all of it was prison. I am in prison and you did not visit me. Prison means serious problem. Prison does not really mean prison as it were, as we know, maybe correctional center in Nigeria. Prison means serious problem that you cannot rescue yourself. You know, no prisoner can actually release himself. Prisoner will always send somebody, lawyers, if before a prisoner can come out, at least nothing less than one lawyer will be involved. Nothing less than external body will be involved. At least one person will be involved. So prisoner simply means inability to rescue yourself. That is what prisoner actually means. So, ladies and gentlemen, now, if Jesus Christ is that poor man, is that poor fellow, and if you if you see that means if you see the poor person, you've seen Jesus Christ. You follow him, and then you can also see God through poor people. You know, Philip asks him, Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ show us the Father. That is God the Father, God the Son. He says. Philip asks that very, very important question. Jesus Christ, show us the Father. Jesus Christ said, I have been in your midst 
John chapter 14. I have been in your midst for long. How come you still say she was the father? I have been in your midst. So that means that if you see Jesus Christ, you have seen God the Father. If you've seen the poor, you've seen Jesus Christ. So if you take equation one, if you've seen the poor, you've seen Jesus Christ. If you've seen Jesus Christ, you've seen God the Father. So if you've seen the poor, equating equation one and equation three, equation one, if you've seen the poor, you've seen Jesus Christ. Equation two, if you see if you see the if you see Jesus Christ, you've seen God. So equating removing equation the middle one, the Jesus Christ, you see that if you see the poor, you have seen God. You've seen God. So that is what we are talking about. That if you see the poor, you've seen God. And so we are just going to go straight and look at the advantages of seeing God or Jesus Christ in our midst today. Remember, we said we are going to talk about the advantages. It's only two advantages that we are going to talk about today. The first advantage is, is that if whenever you see Jesus Christ, remember, if Jesus Christ is poor, is poor people, that means you don't only see Jesus Christ, but you help him. Before we go into the advantage, you know, last week I was showing you numerous pictures. Numerous pictures of the advantage and the disadvantage of seeing Jesus Christ. So whenever we see Jesus Christ, that means that we have helped him. We have shown him love. We have shown him care. We have shown poor people love, poor people care. So that means that if you see poor people and help them, you have helped Jesus Christ. You have helped God. You have helped God. If you see poor people and help them, you have helped God. Because he said, because you did not help poor people, you will go to hellfire. Because it is me that is that poor person. So if you did not help poor people, you have seen. So if you see poor people, you've seen God. So ladies and gentlemen, we are just going to go straight and see some two reasons, two things that will happen to you when you, your prayer will be answered and the wisdom of God, you will have the wisdom of God. Two things that we will identify this Sunday is that number one, wisdom of God or your prayer will be answered. Those are the two things. So number one, prayer answering. Your prayer will be answered whenever you help poor people. Remember, we have equate helping the poor to helping Jesus Christ. So whenever you help God, your prayer will be answered and you have the wisdom of God. Those are the two things that I want to consider. So, but we are just going to, let's in, have this introduction. He said in the book of um, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 17, he said, he said, um, but let's read that verse. Moses, keep the veil.